Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Today is April 21st, 2022 and welcome to The Promise. I am going to give you a small disclaimer before we start because I got to focus my thoughts and things into this message tonight because it's an, it's an important one as we kick off our first new chapter, our new book, Gail. We're, we're moving out of Genesis. We wrapped that up last week and now we're moving into Exodus and I'm excited but there is so much to, to, to share here. There's so much information here that my, my mind is just going all over the place and I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to, to reach out to you guys each and every week and, and it's so, such a blessing um, to me. But you know, last week, if you watched last week's message, you know that uh, we were, Carol and I were out of power uh, almost for the entire week and we got our power back on, on Thursday morning um, with the help of Duke Energy and Kyle and his buddies and Brandy, his neighbor came over and got, got our meter all fixed and a new meter box and who knew? all the steps to do all that and we skipped some of them and some of them we didn't and some we had to wait. Um, I still got two ceiling fans in the house that, that have blown up that don't work so I'm waiting to hear back from Duke Power before I can get those replaced but you know what? The whole key of me telling you all that because it, it was tough. Uh, there was a lot of details to keep energy running still somewhat through the house and having a generator and gas and uh, charged batteries and it was really a learning curve a lot for for Carol to be on be able to understand all that stuff and you know what watts mean and amps and how long things can run for and what can't be run and just being able to keep the generator and cords going and you know it it, it was exciting yes but it was difficult and you know you don't want to I what I want to say is that you know sometimes we just walk into our house and we turn the light switch on and we take it for granted. And that's not something that I really want to do. I want to really focus, especially now that I'm older, you appreciate things more, you appreciate the relationships that um, have stuck with you in life, that people haven't given up on you, or you've given up on them, or they've just walked out out of sheer disappointment, or some choice that somebody made that didn't agree with them, or whatever. Um, I don't want to take all that stuff for, for granted. I don't want to. I want to be able to think about when I turn the light on what this means and how what this how's this bill going to get paid and how long does it run for and how much energy we're we consuming and you know it's 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 that respect that that's there. It's the dedication to keeping all that stuff going and uh, you know I, I just don't want to lose that. I mean it's just like doing this message right each and every week. We I want to be able to dedicate some time and some effort into studying and reading. And, and listening to what God's saying so that I can bring you good stuff, something that will help you in your walk and your faith journey and get closer to God. I know it's helping me, but um, we have a lot of new folks that's here that new that are uh, baby Christians. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give you something that's really, really heavy that you just don't understand, but I don't I want to take it for granted. You know, this is important. And that's the reason why we do this kind of stuff. So. Uh, we got power back last Thursday, so that's that's pretty exciting. Uh, prayer request this week. Uh, b before we get into that, <laughs> Gail, Dad, Dad, checked it. Today was absolutely nuts. The police scanner at work was going ballistic. I don't know, and it was it was car break ins. We got smashed windows all over the place. It's been on the news. They found a whole bunch of new windows and cars broke. Um, uh, today they came over the police scanner. We had. A uh, person that got off the light rail, came through campus, went into the bookstore, grabbed three book bags and a hat and took off. They didn't catch him. But, it, you know, that we had, Dad, check this out. We had a, uh, uh, a call that came in from some females that w w said that there was a, a man that had approached them on campus. And um, <laughs> he was asking them if he could massage their feet. Okay, so that, that's pretty funny. He wasn't charging them or anything or whatever, but, you know, they had to trespass him, so he, he's out of here. But, see, you know, by the end of the day, Gail, I was like, what is going on here? And you know what? I figured it out. What's happening? And I don't know if Carol is still here, but today's 420. And if 420 doesn't mean anything to you, whew, good. That, that's good. That means you're on the, on the good side of stuff. But, you know, for some of my young folks that, that are tuning in, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention names, but... 
420 is the day that it's like everybody smokes pot, right? Hey, this is a Bible study. You, you want deep stuff, turn the page, go someplace else. Because this is real stuff, okay? But that's why the craziness is happening. I mean, I just, you can't even make this stuff up. I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but it's just maybe break some humor here just a little bit. And then as I wind into this message, I think, I think that's probably good. But anyway. That, that's that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So prayer requests this week are for, for Dad and Gail, for Mary and Wayne and uh, Mary's grandparents. Uh, Roger, many of you know that uh, Roger had surgery yesterday. He has a heart valve uh, that needed to be replaced. And it kind of, Gail, Dad, you know, uh, heart stuff uh, sometimes takes a long time before it shows. And, and that was not the case with Roger. Like all of a sudden, like uh, three, four weeks ago, he was not feeling good. He was out of. He was tired. He was out of breath. He was exhausted. He'd get up and go make breakfast, have coffee or whatever, and then he would be exhausted again. So he made appointments to the doctor. They determined what the deal was. And Roger, it was an honor to be able to talk to you the other night and pray with you, buddy. So we're we're looking for a good news and a good report. Uh, I'm hoping by tomorrow we'll be able to hear something from you. So Roger, we're praying for you. Hang in there, man. Better days are ahead. Um, I found out Monday that it is Lyman Appreciation Week. So we're going to call it a week because we didn't really get to appreciate Kyle and all his Lyman buddies on Monday. But uh, Kyle, we appreciate what you do, man. Um, let's see. Continued prayers for my cousin Patty. She lost her foster mom last week. Uh, the service was last Saturday. Uh, continued prayers for my cousin Scott, uh, who is needing a kidney. Mr. Cavalla and his family. Uh, Katie, uh, prayers for the new baby and your foot. Hope your foot's healing up, girl. And also for Katie's grandma and Aunt Gigi, who I saw on social media this week that she is now uh, cancer-free, no more treatment. So praise God for that. That's She's been a trooper going through all this stuff. Uh, continue to prayers for the people of Ukraine, for Europe, and for Russia, and our lack of leadership. Mm, not even going to go there. And uh, last month we had a, I had a uh, blood blood draw, blood draw uh, donation through the Red Cross, and I was uh, messaged this morning that um, my donation went to a person at Novel Novant Health Presbyterian Hospital in Charlotte. So give blood, man. It, it, it's a good thing to be able to do and help and help some folks. Um, I know that this is uh, the week after Easter, but I do want to bring up, because you guys are watching this on YouTube, so obviously you know how to navigate it, and you know what it is, um, but Carol and I got to watch Franklin Graham uh, on Sunday. He had a 12 o'clock thing uh, where he had an Easter message, and he was live from Lviv, Ukraine, and it's hard to believe that um, people were walking and driving and going about their normal day. I mean, here's a country that is in... Uh, total war being taking place all around them, and here they are in the central of the city. And uh, Pastor Graham was just, he was preaching the word, and they had a choir that was there that was absolutely beautiful. Gail, you need to check that out. Mary, Uncle Jimmy, Dad, you need, you need to check that out because it was so good. And the, the cool thing about it, even though most of the songs from the choir that they were singing uh, were in Ukrainian, it was so cool because you can hear like the English part of the music in it. Like you, you kind of you knew what they were saying, even though they were saying it in Ukrainian. Um, it, it was just really cool. It was really special. So I just wanted to share that and reach that out to you. Maybe you'll check that out at some point. So I think uh, that is it for my list here. We're going to get started. Let's let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today. Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for uh, going before each and every one of us, Lord, to, to make us make a way for us. And Lord, uh, I pray that you would focus my mind right now on the message that's here, the, the message that you have given me. I'm excited about this message as we turn a, a new chapter uh, and a new book into, into your word, your written truths. And Lord, uh, may your word go before me. May it reach out to someone that, that is in need. Help them, Lord. Have open ears, open eyes, and open heart uh, to be able to soak in your word and what you have for them. Speak to them, Lord, and may they know you just a little bit more. All about relationship. It's all about your forgiveness. It's all about you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this uh, dedication. 
I'm very grateful to be able to continue to do this, and I'm excited about this, as I said before. So, Lord, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ten minutes in. Guys, are you ready? I am ready. I want you to open your Bibles to Exodus. We're going into chapter one, and this is going to this is gonna be good. Who's excited with me? Yeah, if it was live, I'd hear some people clapping and stuff, but I got nothing. <laughs> I got chirps. That's it. And a rabbit outside. The one last rabbit, Brandy, that's uh, hanging out outside here. Exodus. Everyone say the word together. Exodus. Exodus. What does it mean? Right? There's a meaning in exit us. Exodus. Get it, Gail? See what I'm saying? It's a word with meaning for the entire chapter of Exodus. It was written by Moses, and it's a great... La- la- Moses was a great leader that God had to lift up after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the the three patriots, right? Now comes Moses. Exodus begins where Genesis leaves off. We continue our study through the lives of 12 tribes. We learned this from last week, all from Jacob. And Joseph, who is now passed and in a coffin in Egypt because he knew God God would lead his people, this tiny little nation, Israel. Israel, a man and a nation of faith, back to the promised land. The promise spoken over Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still applies to the children of Jacob, the 12 tribes. So, I can't think of a better way to open Exodus than to share with you Um, the preface to the message. Now, that's the cool thing about the Bible for you newbies that are just now starting to understand God and and opening his word, and we've been hanging with me for the last little while. Translations are important. It's the same word. It's just translated differently in a way that we can understand it. It's like a different view, a different way to read it, and this is just absolutely incredible. So I want to take just a couple of minutes and I want to read to you the introduction to this important chapter of this important book, Exodus. It says, the human race is in trouble. We've been in trouble for a long time. Enormous energies have been and continue to be expended by many, many men and women to get us out of the trouble we are in. To clean up the world's mess. The skill, perseverance, the intelligence, the devotion of the people who put their shoulders to the wheel to pull us out of the muck. Parents, teachers, healers, counselors, rulers, and it says politicians in here, Uncle Jimmy. We're we're gonna edit that part, right? Let's talk about uh, parents and teachers, healers, counselors, rulers, and how about the police, Mr. Cavallo? How about our first responders? How about our linemen? How about our nurses? We'll we'll put them in there, okay? Not the politicians. Writers and pastors, they are all impressive. At the center and the core of this work is God. The most comprehensive term for what God is doing to get us out of the mess we are in is salvation. Salvation. Salvation is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. Salvation is the biggest word in the vocabulary of the people of God. The Exodus is a powerful and dramatic and true story of God working salvation. Everyone get this? The story has generated an extraordinary progeny through the centuries as it has reproduced itself in song, in poem, in drama and novel, politics and social justice, repentance and conversion, worship and holy living. It continues to capture the imagination of men and women, especially men and women in trouble. You're included. We are all in trouble and we are all included in the story. It is significant that God does not present us with salvation in the form of an abstract truth or a precise definition, or a catchy slogan, but a story. Isn't that what we're reading? Isn't this the recorded history of a story of what's taking place? Yes. Exodus draws us into the story 
with plot and character, which is to say with design and personal relationships. Story is an invitation to participate, first through our imagination, and then, if we will, by faith. See how this is going? With our total lives in response to God, this Exodus story continues to be a major means that God uses to draw men and women in trouble out of the mess of history and into the kingdom of salvation. This applies to us today. It does. About half the book, half of Exodus, chapters 1 through 19 and 20, uh, 32 through 34, is a gripping narrative of an obscure and severely brutalized people who are saved from slavery into the life of freedom. The other half, chapters 20 through 31 and 35 through 40, is a meticulous, some think tedious, basic instruction and training in living the saved free life. The story of salvation is not complete without both halves. It's not complete unless you have both sides of the story a story that you are included in, that I am included in, a story that has you participating in. You are included in God's story. You have a place and a purpose. And that is the story of Exodus. That's the opening to that. I hope that makes some sense to you as we dig into God's word. There are gonna be some truths and some things I want you to always remember as we, do, as we go through this. So let's go ahead and we'll open our Bible and we'll begin in chapter one, verse one. Okay, you guys ready? Let's do this. Watch how this starts. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family. Continuation of Genesis, right? Right where we left off. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, right? The 12 tribes. Joseph was already in Egypt, verse six. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died. It's a lot of time has went by. But the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. See, these are the recorded facts. It helps us to reveal and understand the truth. The names are written down for us. Joseph, the great grandson of Abraham, he saved Egypt and the world from famine because he listened to God speaking through Pharaoh's dream. That's how we got here. Through wisdom and his administration, he was lifted to the highest ranks in all the kingdom. And then Joseph dies. And the ranks and the status of his family, Gail, dies with him. They don't have this anymore. Remember, the Egyptians, remember this now, okay? Through the whole book. The Egyptians didn't associate, they didn't pray, they didn't eat, they, or was close in any way with outsiders. And who are the outsiders? People that were not Egyptian. Remember this point while we unpack all this in this book, okay? The Israelites are outside the kingdom, right? They got the best land. Pharaoh and Joseph gave them the best land. It's outside the, outside this kingdom. It's in it, but it's outside the city. Arms reached away. The best land from Joseph and Pharaoh, and they were fruitful and multiplied greatly. Let's go to verse eight. Then, everyone say then. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, everyone highlight that in your Bible and say it out loud. Look, he said, to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. Mm. See, the Egyptians are in charge and a new Pharaoh, brings new leadership, it brings new ideas, it brings new strategy, it brings a new way of thinking, it brings new insecurities, 
It's the past that has been buried now with new leadership. There's a new Pharaoh. And he says, Joseph who? Everything that Joseph has done, everything that his family represents, they're living on the outside of the kingdom. And Joseph who? They've already forgotten, right? They've already went past this. Pharaoh spoke to his people, not to all the people. In the minority, it's easy to put the minority in its place, right? The Egyptians are in the majority. Israelites are in the minority, right? It's easy to put them in this place. In control. It's easy to keep them silent. It's easy to push them aside. It's easy not to include the minority. Remember, the Egyptians were above all other people. This was normal for them since they were the closest in their minds and in their traditions passed down that they were just below God, right? Pharaoh, who was like God, treated like God, uh, they were proud of racial su superiority towards all other people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can we relate to this today? Can we? Look who is leading this country today. Look who this union is that is wanting to be the up above, right? The all in one, one society, right? It's the wealthy, it's the elites, it's the politicians, it's the lack of freedom of speech. Egyptians, we can relate to this today. The Egyptians, it's not surprising to see them afraid here. We're only, you know, 10 verses in. You see them discriminating against a strong minority group, the Israelites. If there is a war, the, the Pharaoh said, the minority may fight hand in hand with our enemies against us. This is a national security, could be in jeopardy. Can you relate to this? Have you heard this recently? Yes. Does this sound like today? Yes, this sounds like today. Let's go, verse 11. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramses as stores, as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to, to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They stayed on them. They, they pounded them in the dirt. They kept them going. There's, there's overtime with no pay going on here. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. Slave labor, Gail, slave labor. The Egyptian leadership, full of insecurity, selfish motivations, and a complete lack of leadership, pushed down in slavery and hard suffering labor to control the people. That's what's going on here. In doing so, they built two great cities, store cities. The more they afflicted them, the more the Israelites grew. This was God's purpose for the Israelites. Don't, don't let me lose you now. Don't let me lose you. Israelites, remember, didn't associate or have inner relationships with the Egyptians. They were set apart and did not take up the customs. They did not take up the traditions or their way of life. Check this out, Kale. God kept them set apart. There's purpose in that. See, they could not have done this in Canaan. They couldn't. History repeats itself if we don't learn from it, right? We saw that when, when, the, when uh, the family was, was too close. It was too close to the city. It picked up the tra traditions. It made bad choices. That's what would happen here. But now they are set apart. They were not part of the Egyptian traditions and picked up those things and intermarried. They were separate. God had them separated so that they grew numerous. There was purpose here. God knew his people. So now in Egypt, in a land that they don't own, they multiplied and they grew. See, suffering and persecution is the seed of the church. Let me say that again because that's important. That means so much. Suffering and persecution is the seed of the church. 
See, no amount of suffering and no amount of persecution could defeat God's eternal plan. That's why the church is still here. That's why it's the only organization that will continue to prosper and last. Because God's behind it. And we are full of suffering and persecution. And it's only going to get worse according to God's word. But it grew. They grew. They multiplied. And Pharaoh didn't want to kill them but keep them as slaves. He didn't know what to do with them. Israelites were going, were doing all the hard work while the Egyptians watched. We were doing all the work. Well, we, they, they were, the Israelites were doing all the work and they were doing all the work for Egypt. Let's continue. Verse 15. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shipra and Pua, when you help the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, it, if it is a boy, kill him. This is what they want you to do. Kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. Verse 17. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. And they let the boys live. Mm. The king orders... All males born to be put to death. This is to control the population of the Israelites. I want you to think about this today, okay? He wants to weaken them over the course of a generation. You remember, Satan knew the seed to the Messiah came from the children of Israel. It was in this area. It was part of the 12 tribes. It's wicked. All males born put to death. Let's continue reading. All males born put to death. And then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and he asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? And the midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. I guess all women would like a birth like that, right? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm continuing. Uh, verse 20. So God was kind, kind to the midwives. God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, let's say that one more time. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. And, and then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born, all his people, every boy that is born must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Mm. It's another command from the king. Every boy that is born must be thrown into the Nile, but let every girl live. And you know, China is one of those countries that does that. They allow this. They have too many children. It's, it's to do this to help control the population. We can relate to this today. It's happening in the world today. Abortion is legal. It is legal in our country and many others. And in some countries, it's treated like birth control. Probably here too, to some degree. Can we relate to this today? Yes, we can. Does this surprise us? Does it shock us? No. No. Just like we've been watching the war in Ukraine all this time now, right? We're getting a front row seat that the media allows us to see. And it doesn't even shock us really anymore. There's a cure for cancer, right? Probably, yeah, probably. Dad, there's a, there's a cure for heart disease, right? Yeah. The government overreacting and overreaching into the lives of people. Ordering this type of control can we relate to this today? I think we can. Let's get back to this. The midwives. The midwives feared God, Gail. They feared God. And they probably feared Pharaoh, feared Pharaoh and his leadership and power as well. But they feared God more. They didn't follow through with these orders, knowing that they could be punished, they could be replaced or even killed. But their fear of God was greater their choice was clear. God over government. Let me say that again. 
Their choice was clear, God over government. The government demanded something clearly against God's command. Acts 4.19, Peter asked the government authorities then, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you be the judge. Peter knew who he was going to listen to. Without a doubt, he knew who he was going to listen to. Today, though it's illegal, Christians still meet in underground churches in some countries. Churches remained open during COVID, and government demanded control. They pushed, they suppressed, all for our good, right? Or was it theirs? Uh We can relate to this. Look at us today. Look at what we know now, today, right now. Look, Dad, what we know now that we were too afraid of before. Somebody say amen, because that's huge. Can you see the control? Can you see the outcome? Can you see the insecurities? Can you see the lack of leadership? Can you see the decisions? Can you see what's coming next? The lack of God in our society, can you see that? See, generally, generally, listen to me. I'm not all about non-government, okay? Generally, we are called to obey the government and honor our civic authorities, but we are never called to put government in the place of God. Amen. We are to obey God first. We know God's trusted word, his character. We know that. We're learning this each and every week. We know his truth and we know his honesty. Can we say that about our government, Mr. Cavallo? Can we today say that? No. See, Pharaoh said less and God said more. The battle here wasn't Egypt and Pharaoh's rule against the Israelites. It was against the Israelites and God. God was on their side. There was nothing they could do. It was going to prosper no matter what. God had set them apart. Two trusted midwives stepping in and leading. They made a choice. They chose God over government. They chose God over Pharaoh. They chose God over what was right as opposed to what was wrong. Knowing God first over the ruling of government and human leadership. It takes all kinds, all levels, all places, all shapes, all forms in God's plan. God blessed the midwives because they did their part. They stood for what was right. They were willing to stand up against the power and the authority of Pharaoh. Mm, Imagine if we did that today. And God blessed them. Isn't that sweet, Mary? Isn't that sweet, Aunt Sharon, Patty, Noah? He blessed them. You are a part of God's story, like like the opening says. God's got a story here, and you're included. You're a part of it. You you don't have to be at the top leadership of the thing and, and be preaching like Franklin Graham. You do your part in your local school, in your local work, in the school board, in election. Be a politician following God's word. That's where we're lacking in this country. We've gotten away from it. We've pushed him out for so far and so long that we're lost now. We're letting, we're letting them run the, run the show here. They're making all the decisions. You see the control? This applies to us today. See, Pharaoh seeing his first plan didn't work. He orders a second plan. Just like today. This ain't working. We need, we need more control. We need to control this. We're going to implement this next and this next, and we're going to put a mask on you and all this other mess and nonsense. All male children should be killed. And he even says this at the end to his own people. See, control demands drastic details. And often it's at the hands and lives of us common folks. This cannot and will not last when it's against God's commands. We need to choose better. Just like the midwives here, they had a story, they made a choice, and they put God first. And that's how we get back. That's how we put America back again. That's how we put the, put the planet back together again. I don't know how else to say it, but we are on a, a bad road right now, Gail. It's a bad cul-de-sac that leads to nowhere. We got to turn this ship around and we got to get back to loving God first and putting Him first above government and control because they don't have our best interest at heart. 
Lord, we thank you for having our best interest at heart. Your children, your family, Lord, I, I thank you for this online church family that we have here, that we get to open your word and read your recorded history, a story written down, a story of real people, a story of families, a story of brokenness, a story of redemption, a story of struggle, a story of, of blessedness, of people that you have chosen and raised up just for things like this, people like me and you, all of us. We have a story and we have a purpose that we can be raised up if we're willing to be raised, if we're willing to listen, if we're willing to take courage. Lord, just like Moses, who we're going to be studying next week, you raised him up out of anywhere. He had every excuse in the planet not to do this. He wasn't a good speaker. Maybe he stuttered. We're going to learn all this. But yet you still used him. He was at the top. But the midwives were in the middle. They were told to do something that they knew was wrong and they couldn't do it and they risked everything because of it. They could have been killed. Who cares? They had to make a choice. And the choice was to follow you, to put you above the rules. You above the government. You above all else. You above all else in their lives. You above their choices and decisions. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that example. Help us apply that today. As we sit around and turn the TV on and we read the news and we see everything that's going on in the past two years that what we have been through and what we see is this next level of, of government and control and the things that are taking place in this world today in, in, our, in our nation as well as others. I mean, we have to do better. We have to put you first. When has it become normal for us to be so upset and so um, just crazy side by self, a side of, our, of ourself, but sin doesn't bother us? We can get worked up about all kinds of things and sin doesn't even bother us anymore. Lord, help us. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your recorded history lesson here. I pray that this will go out to someone that needs this word here tonight and help them make a good choice, to help them with a little bit of courage, to look back on this chapter and say, yeah, we've come, we've come a long way. And even though we're set apart and we are set apart, you will bless us and honor us if we put you on that mantle above everything else. Lord, help us keep you focused. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 37 minutes in. Guys, I don't know how else to say it, but we need, we need to put God back in, in our life. We need to put him in charge and we need to make our decisions and our choices reflect that. And I honestly believe that if we continue to do that, we will get some momentum in our life. We will get our life back on track. It's not going to be easy Everything is a struggle. This, the whole earth is a struggle. Just living today is a struggle. It always has been and always will be. But we can do this for you. It's okay to struggle with you. It's all worth it when you have God on your side because he's got you. He's got you. You're part of the story. He has a story to tell of him through you. And that's what the Exodus is all about. Excited for what's coming up. Guys, you have a good week. I'll see you guys soon. Stay well, stay safe, stay smart, stay well, stay blessed. Okay? Love you all. Peace.